It's time to start gearing up for the holidays and making some geode fire glass coasters is what it's all about. These evergreen coasters are made with the Epoxy Resin Store's premium quality resin and I love it for the effects. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Hi everybody, it's Jana here for Moon Cusser Art and I am back to making some of my geode coasters. And if you're not doing it already, you should be. Now is the time to be getting ready for the holidays. It's a great time to sell coasters from um, making them. So you can see I've got some of my products laid out here. I'm gonna be making a green set of coasters. I've got some of the Flow Art Resin Liquid Pigments. This is from the Epoxy Resin Store. It's a really nice, just a great green. You can see I like to make my puddle chips. So I have one for the green here. And it's transparent. And I like that effect in these geode coasters. I've got some glitter. This is from Michaels. It's Recollections brand and it's their chunky glitter. It's called Pine. And I also have some Perlex, some mica powders that I'll be using. I've got the spring green and the brilliant gold. Love those two colors together. I'm going to be using epoxy resin from the epoxy resin store this is their premium clear epoxy it's a two-part epoxy that is mixed by volume not by its weight so you just measure out the exact same amounts i like to measure mine on a scale in ounces but you can use a cup um you know a regular cooking measuring cup but I like to measure mine out in ounces. That way I can know exactly how much I'm using. It's a little bit more precise for me. So I have a digital scale that I use. I have already marked my cup. I'll be batching up a total of 12 ounces of the epoxy resin. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. All right, so these are my molds I'm going to be using. These are from Let's Resin. They're, they're, I call them Druzy molds because that's how they call them on their website. They're, you know, whatever. Geo, Druzy, Agate, it all works. They have these open centers and uh, it takes the 12 ounces. I've got my resin batched up here. And now I'm going to tint the resin. But before I do that, I like to fill them up with about half of my resin clear. So let's get that in there. And what's going to happen by me doing this is it's going to let the bubbles come to the surface. Because if you've used silicone molds before, you know that you don't want to use a torch, a really hot torch on them because what that'll do is ruin your mold. And I've had these molds for quite a while. Um, they do mold, silicone molds will uh, age. So you don't want to use, um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, spritz it with alcohol and that'll pop the bubbles. Well, anytime you're putting alcohol on the silicone, it is going to age the silicone as well. I clean my silicone molds with white vinegar. That's gonna be a very um, mild cleaning agent and it will uh, help me get the longest life possible out of my silicone molds. So that's gonna, get them filled up about halfway and that gives me I see something floating in my resin so let me get that up and out of here whatever it is I don't know a little bit more in this one here so I'm gonna let those bubbles pop on their own my room temperature today I work in my studio in my basement and the temperature in here today is about 74 degrees and um, 
I also have a dehumidifier running and that helps to keep the moisture out of the air. Moisture can also affect how your resin cures. So I try to have the humidity at about 50% and that seems to work good. So those are all factors, temperature, humidity, and also the thickness of your uh, resin. If you pour it on the thicker side, it's going to cure faster because there's more heat generated by the resin. It's a, you know, it's a thermal process when you combine the part B and the part A. And that starts that chemical reaction going. So that generates heat. So the thicker the pour, the more heat. That one looks good. Okay, so those are going to uh, get the bubbles popping. I have my embossing tool, so I'm going to use that to pop the bubbles. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit. I also have a toothpick handy because I see I already managed to get a little hair in there. So get those things out. And so there's are going to sit. I'm going to uh, tint my resin and I'll be back. All right, I've got my colors batched up. This is the Flow Art Green. It's transparent. You can tell by when you lift it like that, if you can look through the stream of color, you can see that it's transparent. So I like that. I have my glitter batched up here. I went really heavy on the glitter. So that's ready. I see some managed to even get over there. And here's the Pearl X colors. So this is the Brilliant Gold. This is the Spring Green. You can see the patterns of it in the resin there. It's kind of cool. But what I like to do is I use 99% alcohol in my mica powders. And, you know, call me crazy, but I don't know if you got now I already did it. But when you drop that onto the surface, it likes to pop the bubbles, number one. So that's good. But... It also, I think, and I, you know, somebody might tell me wrong, no, Janet, that's not happening, you're crazy, but it makes, to me, it makes the micas move differently. So let me uh, give you a close-up look, dropping the resin onto this one here. Let's see if there. So just a few drops of the 99% alcohol, and then I mix that in. And I do that right before I pour. So let's start adding some color. I'm gonna start, I have my paper cups. I like to use paper cups when I do this method because I can pinch and make a spout. So with the glitter, I like to go around the outside edge. start coming in with the spring green. And I want the gold to be around the inside center. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, and blow our green. <clears throat> and then we're going to cut. 
come back in with the spring green. And you can see how the, the mica reacts differently in the resin. You can see here, it's starting to drift. And I love that. It's so pretty. Really is nice stuff. Let's get a little bit more in here. And back to the green. And this one I'm going to go kind of over top of the outside edge because now my glitter it's either floating or it's sinking, <laughs> one or the other. And I want color all the way out at that edge. But I give it time to do its thing. Now I'm going to come back with my embossing tool and heat that up a little bit. I'm just going to, I'm going to try to stay out of the gold and I'm just going to swirl a little bit between these colors, just like that. All right, and I also have just a little bit more resin here. So I am just going to do a little drizzle with that across the top. And one last time. All right, so they're all set. I'm going to put this plastic cover on to keep the dust off and I will see you tomorrow. It's always kind of like Christmas when I come downstairs and take the top off and get a look at these things and yeah you know i'm making them getting ready for christmas and the colors are christmassy but it doesn't matter what time of year it is getting a look at your resin work the next morning it's like christmas all right so let's get a look at these things you can see i have my gloves on and you know they've been they've been used uh, <laughs> I clean them with uh, isopropyl alcohol to get any resin off. So I get quite a bit of use out of my gloves. Um, so I recommend doing that. I don't use, some people use baby wipes, but baby wipes will leave a little bit of residue on the gloves. And when you go to touch stuff, you don't want to have any kind of residue. So that's why I have the gloves on, even if I, you know, I wash my hands before I come downstairs, there could be oils on my fingertips. So putting gloves on reduces any risk. So you can see they're hard. And let's start popping these out. What do you think? Looking nice, aren't they? Well, I'm pretty happy. So we just go around the edges and release it there first. Looks like I got a little bubble that edge there. That happens. And then I, because it's got this silicone center, push down like that and get it out of the center. Now, these were poured yesterday. It hasn't been 24 hours yet, but they're thick. So they come out easily. And there's your nice clean mold. And there's that. So let's keep doing this. They're all out. I like this side. I think they're pretty. 
Let's do a flip and see what it looks like on the back. Hmm. Okay, so, you know, not that interesting. Got a lot of glitter on this side, and I know a lot of people say, oh no, I, I really like that side. <laughs> this to me is not that interesting. Not on this one. I like that better. Gloves are off, hands are washed. And I'm gonna flip these over. This is gonna be the back. And, you know, that's the way it's gonna be. Okay, so two of them have large openings, so I need to use a wide tape, and I need to grab my scissors. I'm gonna peel, get a piece of tape. And this is just painter's tape. I get it at Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever I happen to be and think, oh, I need tape. This is uh, by 3M. This is their safe relief release painter's tape. And I wanna put it over top of these holes, just like that. And then I take my fingernail and I rub it See how I'm starting to get the edge of the hole there? Just starts to show up. Because you wanna make sure that you get it to stick really good. I have never had a problem with the paper, with this tape letting go on the back when I do this. So, just like that. Let's do it to each one. So my tape is all applied. Now, you know, you've been watching me push on these. Remember, I haven't even gotten to 24 hour mark with these. So you can see that this is about a quarter of an inch thick, but they're rock solid. They're not bendy. I know a lot of people complain about their resin. Oh, it's bendy when I take it out of the mold. Well, that's because the resin isn't gonna work as well. And when you're making coasters, you want to have a strong resin. And the epoxy resin stores resin is really good. It's, I love using it. It creates, it has a very uh, low viscosity. So it allows for nice uh, results, patterns like at this. I think some people call that the, the dragon scale effect. Um, it's pretty much the same thing but uh, it allows for the pigments to move through the resin. So it works really good, I think, in this application. All right, so now you can see I've got my tape in there sticky side up. And now I'm gonna start building with the glass. This is a quarter inch. This is a reflective. One side has a mirror and the other side is just clear with the color in there. So this is fire uh, pit glass that I bought online. I'll make sure to include a link to this as well. This is uh, by far the prettiest fire glass that I've uh, purchased and it works great. I'm gonna do a little bit of sorting to get some of the better pieces, the larger pieces, and I'm gonna start dropping those in. So like this one, you can see it's gonna be a nice one because it's got kind of a cutout. So it's like building a mosaic, right? And you're just going to find placement. You don't want to have everything, sorry, my big hand's in the way. You don't want to have everything too tight because we're gonna be filling this with clear resin, but that's how it's gonna be. So let's, uh, let me sort out some of the glass and we're gonna do a time-lapse of placing the glass. All right, I finished my work with filling these with the pieces of glass. Make sure you take your time. You want to have them fit and make a nice little puzzle in there. 
and be careful because it's reflective glass. One side is silver, the other side is the color. And then you wanna make sure you're checking yourself that the silver side is down. I had that happen one time where one of the pieces got past me and boy, it made a silver sparkle and I didn't want that. So anyway, so that's that part of it. Also, I take a soft lint-free towel and I wipe off any fingerprints because you have to be careful. It is um, broken glass. So I do it with my bare fingers, but I'm careful and uh, you know, that'll leave fingerprints. So I wipe those off um, when I'm all done. <coughs> all right, so now I have two ounces of the Epoxy Resin Stores Premium Clear Epoxy, their general use. And I batched up two ounces. Now that's way more than what I need. But in order to get a good measurement, you wanna make sure that you're not going too small. I'm gonna use the rest of it in another little thing that I have going on here in the studio. So I don't mind, I'm not gonna pop the bubbles. I don't mind the bubbles because actually what I have found is having a little bit of bubbles in between the glass, it just kind of adds to the sparkle. So I'm fine with the bubbles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use my popsicle stick to let the resin drizzle out. This is a nice thin resin again because it's going to work its way in between all the glass. So let's do that. So you can see some big bubbles come up Right here, I've got one. You just, you know, pop it with the torch. And like I said, I don't mind if there's some tiny bubbles in there. Now also, because of using the mold, you get a little bit of a lip edge around where the resin meets the silicone. So that works nicely because it actually helps to contain everything here in the middle. pop those bubbles. You want to watch if you have any big ones coming up. Sometimes there's some spots that don't want to let the bubbles pop. So here I, I keep getting one in this one. And a big bubble, you want to pop it. So you want to just keep an eye on it. Again, this is a, a very nice uh, resin to work in this project because it has such low viscosity. So it moves and flows and it gets in between all the little cracks. Does a great job. There's some bubbles. So I'm just using my lighter torch. It's all I need. And I'm just gonna keep doing this and then I'll cover it and we'll let that cure. And I will see you later. Back at the studio. It has been 24 hours since we did the centers. So it is time to move on to the next step. So let's get a peek at these. Look nice. And there's my tape on the back. When I peel it away, you can see it comes off nice and clean nothing left there okay so that works really good for me so i'm gonna leave that tape there because now it is time to put latex on the back here's my liquid latex and you know i know people say oh elmer's glue works you know what I got this in inventory. <laughs> I've had this bottle for whew, two years, I think. So it, you know, the amount that I use, it lasts a long time. I used to use brushes to apply the liquid latex. 
And then I would throw the brush away because I would try to clean it according to their directions and I could never get the brush clean. So I'd had all these, you know, free brushes from Michaels that I would use. Anyway, this is one of the fingers from one of my gloves. So, you know, eventually your gloves, you know, they, you pull them off and the, it tears or whatever. So I save them and I cut the fingers off and then I have a single finger. And what I do is, this gets gummy every once in a while, not a big deal. So I just, sometimes I put it into a cup, other times I just pour it on and take my finger and I just spread it right to that edge. All right. And I do this before I paint my edges because this way it actually protects my edges, not only from drips, but in case my paintbrush, when I'm putting the gilding on the edge, it protects the edge from any wayward bristles of my brush. So you don't have to go thick. The thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry. Sometimes you gotta help it stay at the edges a little bit. Takes a couple of swipes maybe. And you don't have to worry about, you know, with, when it's for drips, you don't have to worry too much about the, um, the middle. Because if I get a drip in the middle, I'm in big trouble. Something's, something's going wrong if that happens. So I'm just going to, I just need just a little bit more to get this area here. But I'm going to do this to each one, and I'm going to let it dry. It does not take long for it to dry. And it's a warm day out in the backyard, so if I want to, I can take them outside and let them dry really fast outside, because it doesn't matter if it dries fast or if it dries slow. It doesn't matter. Okay, so let's uh, do that. Right, I took them outside. It's warmer today and sunny, not rainy, and everything is dry. So now it's time to put the gilding edge on. A lot of people like to use uh, Posca markers. Posca markers are water-based. I don't like using those on my geodes because I find that it does not adhere well to the edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this gilding paint that I have. This one is brass and it's gonna be a nice color combination on there. So this has to be cleaned <clears throat> with a, uh, a, a brush cleaner. It's not, you can't clean it up with water, soap and water it won't work. So. I have a small natural hair brush and I'm going to use that. So let's get started on edging the geos. the same day and everything is dry my edges are all dry so now it's time to put the top coat on and I always clear coat my coasters this is counterculture DIY um, you know you might say well why are you using a different brand the reason is this one is heat resistant up to 500 degrees. That means that my coasters are not gonna get rings when somebody sets a hot mug on top. 
and that's important to me. I want to make sure that when somebody buys one of my coasters, they're getting a good product. So that's why this is the Counterculture DIY. This is their artist resin. It's their original, um, yeah, or the, the original. So it's uh, got a very thick viscosity. You can see I got tons of bubbles in there because I mixed it up really fast, but it doesn't matter because I'm doing this on the surface and I will be using my torch and that'll pop the bubbles and that's fine. So just like I did with the um, liquid latex, I'm going to put on another finger and then that way I can coat my edges and uh, then I can take that off and go about working. So let's get started. So just using that glove finger, dipping it straight into the resin and smoothing it onto the edges gets a nice even coating. Make sure you have good lighting so that you can see everything and then I like to let the resin kind of build up a little bit. It's got that lip edge and it holds it in place. All right, so they're all coated. I brought all the resin right to the edge. And I like this one because this counterculture, because it's so thick, it really gives you a nice edge on your coasters. So I torched with my creme brulee torch and what I'm going to do is periodically for the next maybe 15 minutes, I'm just going to check it for bubbles and give it another quick little hit with the torch because this is so thick it will hold on to the bubbles in there. The little tiny micro bubbles will keep coming up to the surface. I want to get a nice shiny surface and by babysitting them that's exactly what I will get and I'm gonna put the cover over it keep the dust off just like that and I'll be back to check it for bubbles and I will see you tomorrow Taking the top off. Everything is cured. Oh boy, those look pretty. Look at that. All right, so I have a little bit of cleanup to do. You can see the drips on the back edge here. Lots of them. And that's fine. We're going to just take that off, get them cleaned up, get that tape off, and we're going to go outside and get some pictures of these lovely little things. All right. Okay. Just rub off that liquid latex, warm up the drips with the embossing tool, and everything pops right off the back. Nice and clean. Here they are. These are evergreen geodes. And I just love the color combination, the flow art, liquid pigment from the epoxy resin store is fantastic it's transparent but it has a lot of depth in that color so it works really great love all the resins that i used i like using the premium quality epoxy resin from the epoxy resin store i'll put a code in for 20 percent off discount in the description box as well as for the counterculture diy artist resin that one also has a code. I use that to make everything heat resistance for the coasters. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you here next time on Moon Cusser Art.